Hi there and welcome to this Two Minute Tips video and today we're going to be looking at the colour space options in the Nikon Z series cameras. So colour space is perhaps not something we think about too much, um, but in the Z6, Z7 and Z50, as with many other Nikon um, DSLRs, you can capture and store images in either sRGB or Adobe RGB. So the choice of colour space in camera as opposed to in post-processing is only really relevant if you're capturing um, images in formats such as JPEG. With RAW, there's no colour profile overlaid on it and you do it in post-production. So let's take a look at Adobe RGB first. Now, this captures a larger gamut of colours, um, apparently about 35% bigger than sRGB. Um, but the thing is, you do need monitors and printers or output devices that are capable of displaying or printing or outputting um, that gamut of colours. So they tend to be quite high-end, with most monitors probably only capable of displaying up to about 97% of sRGB, not Adobe RGB. So whilst it captures more um, a wider gamut of colours, are they really usable or needed is what we have to think. The other option, sRGB, is more widely used and is more general purpose in terms of its use. As I said, many monitors can display up to about 97% of sRGB and when you print out either using your own home printers or um, through professional printers, they will want JPEGs in sRGB colour space. The other thing you have to think about is that if you have um, created um, JPEGs in camera with an Adobe RGB um, color space and you then take them straight out and display them on um, perhaps an sRGB monitor. The colors can look off, they can look compressed and they don't look quite right. Equally, I've come across this when I've sent um, a series of images off to be printed by an external print shop and I had saved them in Adobe RGB. They were printed in sRGB and they came back looking very flat. So getting the right color space is quite important when you get to that output stage. So, because this only um, relates to JPEGs, I tend to have it set to sRGB because what I tend to do is shoot in RAW and I know I'm going to be post-processing it so I can choose the colour space in post-processing. I'm shooting JPEGs because perhaps I want a quick image that I can put out to social media and that the most versatile approach is probably going to be sRGB. I'm not going to be using the JPEGs to do any post-processing on. I want something that's quick and distributable straight from the camera. So that's why I tend to have sRGB and I think you'll find that the default setting is sRGB. However, maybe sometimes there is a specialist use that you have for Adobe um, JPEGs, Adobe Color Space JPEGs in camera. Maybe you need Adobe Output um, for those JPEGs. Um, or maybe you know you're going to post-process them um, and therefore you want the flexibility to then choose whether you keep them at Adobe RGB when you output them from perhaps Lightroom or Photoshop or some other post-processing um, application or you take them to sRGB once you've done the post-processing. So I hope this uh, video was useful. It's just a quick insight into color space. It wasn't intended to be an in-depth review of what color spaces are and how they operate. There are many videos um, online that give you much deeper insight to this, but I hope you found it useful. As always, if you did, do hit the subscribe um, button below. Do hit the notification bell and you'll get more of these um, two minute tips videos. Do take a look at the playlist of back catalog two minute tips videos. There's lots of functionality in the Nikon Z series cameras that we perhaps overlook at times. Um, as I said, I hope you found this useful and I look forward to seeing you on a future video.